everyone. <laughs> Sorry about the um, delay in going live, uh, but welcome. I'm Rachel Tuple and welcome to Creative Cake Design. And this live is absolutely packed full of tons of kitchen hacks and some time management um, suggestions for you. So uh, I am so glad you're here. I see we've got a couple of people. We've got Tracy and Sharon and Margie and Donna and Ellen and Alice, so many people, so excited that you guys are here. So a uh, couple of things, you can absolutely type in that chat box to ask me any questions that you'd like. Um, they will relay those questions to me if we need to, um, but I'll also be checking on my laptop. So sorry if my eyes are, are looking somewhere else, it's not intentional um, to avoid you, I promise. It's, it's to make sure that I'm getting all the commentary um, that I need in order to answer your questions. Um, I also wanna make a note, um, if you haven't downloaded your daily kitchen schedule, I highly recommend you do that. That is actually in the link just above where um, our chat box is at. So um, either above or below the video. Sorry, can't tell you that one. I think it's above the video, but um, definitely download the, the kitchen schedule. And I'm going to talk you through that first. Um, not entirely. I want you guys to kind of take a peek at that on your own. However, there's some really great information in this little packet that we have put together for you. I um, in order to guide your baking schedule on a weekly basis. Um, it breaks down everything that you should be doing on a daily basis in order to stay on schedule to get your cakes, your cookies, your macarons, whatever you are baking, to make sure that you have everything in order for a client or just if you're planning an event yourself. Maybe you're hosting a party and you're going to be baking some items and you want to make sure you have enough time throughout your week uh, to get everything done in, uh, in time and not be rushing at the last minute like so many of us bakers are notorious for. <laughs> I don't know about you guys, but I pull all-nighters all the time and frankly, I'm getting too old for it. And my body is letting me know and um, I haven't been sticking to my own recommendations. So uh, that's something I am working on. Um, looks like our download is in the comment section now too. So please, please download that. But I wanted to talk about um, one of the main things that we as bakers and cake designers and uh, cookie designers, one of the things that we struggle with most, especially if this isn't just our only business that we do, if we're doing multiple businesses or if we have our day job and the cake or cookie industry is our side hustle. Um, this is one of the biggest things we struggle with is time management, right? We are working all day long. We come home, we eat dinner, take care of the family. And then usually that's when we're heading into the kitchen. Um, some of us do this as a full-time job. And so we're just trying to get things done in sort of that eight hour, nine to five kind of work day, um, which I don't know about you guys, but for me is nearly impossible. I, I am the notorious for just taking on way too much um, and working my little tushy off. So if you're like me, then this uh, download is definitely going to be helpful. Um, one of the biggest things is honestly setting a schedule and sticking to it, um, which is the setting the schedule part is the easy part, but sticking to it can always just be such a challenge for us. We have, you know, we're we're people um, and we have things that pop up. We have injuries that pop up. We have family issues that pop up. We have all sorts of um, things like forgetting ingredients or um, we mix up a batch of something and we forgot to add uh, the eggs and now we have to start all over. And so there's always something that seems to get in the way of our schedule. But having a schedule and doing your best to stick to it is just the first step in setting yourself up for success. And it is an important one. So make sure that you're giving yourself a, a nice layout of your week and it could start on any day you need it to. That's what's nice about this particular schedule is you can adjust it to your own, uh, your own situation. So whether you are baking for a birthday party and that you're hosting for the weekend, this is a great schedule for you to follow. It gives you uh, the information you need for day one. So maybe your day one is a Sunday and not a Monday to make sure you have time to get through everything. You adjust it as you need to. But basically day one is 
your scheduling day. It's the day that you're going to get all of the information together in one place that you need in order to complete whatever baking task you're going to do. So it's making your grocery list. It's checking it twice, maybe even three times. So you don't have to run out to the store a second time um, to pick out other ingredients. Um, I think that's probably the biggest time suck um, that is out there is when you forget something and you have to go back to the store. It's just excess time that's wasted that you could be um, spending in the kitchen getting your task completed. So, uh, you know, take this first day pretty seriously. Make sure you have everything that you need to get started. Run all your errands on that day one so that when you come back to your kitchen and you get started on day two, you have everything you need and you are just going to zip through everything just the way you need to. So um, keep that in mind because I think that's one of the things that a lot of people just sort of overlook is the fact that there's a lot of planning that goes into baking. You know, it's not like cooking where you can just throw a bunch of things together in one place and magically we have, you know, seafood gumbo or, or whatever it might be that you're making. You know, baking's a science. It takes exact ingredients. It takes everything to come together at just the right time in the right measurements um, and done the right way. So I do encourage you to spend a little time on this day one scenario and make sure that you have everything you need. Um, fortunately, um, I have a husband who's always willing to run to the store for me. And I have a kiddo now who can get up to the store by himself. So, um, you know, use people around you if you need to. I, I promise. Um, I think that, uh, you know, utilizing your resources is, is one more way to make sure you've got good time management skills. Um, hi, Angela. Um, you're from New York. That's fantastic. Um, we're glad you're here with us. Um, and then um, let's move into section two. Section two is all about baking. And um, a couple of my kitchen hacks fall into this baking category. Um, well, in fact, most of them fall into the baking category today. But uh, the baking piece is obviously an important piece of our entire week and making sure that um, the rest of our week lines itself up well in order to have time to decorate everything, to package things, to get it to our clients, or just to set it up for our own event. So um, take, take a look at the baking section as well. Um, but that's really where most of my baking hacks are going to lie today. My kitchen hacks are really focused around baking today. Um, and we're going to get to those in just a moment, I promise you. But I think um, the first, like, biggest hack that I can recommend to you is baking everything in one day if possible. So when I have a huge cake order, which is typically what I'm working on, I know I would love to hear what all of you guys are working on. What is, you know, what is the thing that you love to bake? Is it cakes, cookies, muffins, breads? What are you baking? Um, and maybe I can help guide you a little bit specifically for some of those other items. Um, but cake is what's focused on in this particular um, a segment for, uh, for the download, but you really can turn it into any baked good that you need to just swap out where it says cake, just swap out your, your baked good. I promise it will still work for you. Um, but baking is one of those things that takes a lot of time typically. I'm usually making multiple tiers at one time. Um, occasionally, I will be doing a wedding cake and a groom's cake or two wedding cakes in one week. And so I can easily have 10 to 12 tiers, which means that's 20 to 22 layers of cake that I'm baking. And um, that can really be a problematic if I don't get all of that baking done in one day. And mostly because it will throw off the rest of my schedule in order to make sure I have enough time to assemble those layers, make the tiers, ice them, get them prepped and ready for decorations, and then actually have time to decorate them as well. Um, but, but there's a couple of reasons why baking all in the same day is really important to me. And the first reason is that it's going to save me from having to heat up my kitchen more than one day a week. And if you need to, you can always bake multiple days. 
days, but just space them out appropriately um, for timing, okay? So making sure that, um, like for me, I bake all of my cakes in one day. And then if I'm doing extra desserts like brownies or cookies or French macarons, those things I bake like the day before the event, sometimes the morning of the event, depending upon what it is. But if you can group all of the same baked good in one day, you're gonna heat up your kitchen once that week, which means you're gonna save on energy later in your week if you're running your air conditioner, for instance. It also just helps in general, keep your hot day hot and your cold days cold, right? So if you are baking and you plan on decorating in the afternoon, your air conditioner is having to work extra hard to get it cooler that afternoon for you to be able to do what you need to do in a cooler environment. Um, so for me, I bake in one day, I let my air conditioner catch up overnight. And then the next day, my kitchen is nice and cool. I don't have to worry about waiting for things to cool down. Um, because remember, temperature makes our ingredients very temperamental. Depending upon what we're working on, um, it could make our butter way too soft, way too quickly. Or if it's too cold, it can make our fondant or our gum paste just seize up and just become challenging to work with as well. Uh, trying to cover a cake in cold fondant um, is, is hard. It Cracks. So, you know, think about what days you're going to do um, each of your tasks to make sure that your kitchen is either hot or cold and try to do all the hot things on one day and all the cold things on a different day. So again, that's more, it's a time management thing for sure, but it's definitely an energy saver and um, it just helps in general keep your kitchen um, in the right state. <laughs> I don't know about you guys, I swear, I feel like baking days, there is everything everywhere. I've got, you know, flour and sugar and eggs and I've got things all over the place. And, um, you know, trying to work with uh, an ingredient like buttercream that is not going to be cooked, you need to really keep that separate from everything else that might be raw. And so I just automatically split those, split those days up so I don't have to stress over cross-contamination or worrying about um, my buttercream and my raw goods um, accidentally getting mixed together. So a uh, baking day is for baking. Get all your raw ingredients out there um, and then switch over to, you know, cleaning your kitchen and switch over to all of your ingredients that are just going to be, um, you know, ready to go like buttercream or fillings like cream cheese icing, those types of things that aren't going to be cooked. So cook and bake in one day. Okay, um, super, super helpful. Um, <laughs> you will never get too old when you enjoy, isn't that right, Lee? <laughs> um, I, uh, I'm, I'm definitely getting older and my body's catching up with me. I still love what I do and I am still pushing hard to do what I do. Um, but it is just talking to me a whole lot more than I wanted to right now. Um, and Alice, yeah, you're saying how to store your cake layers. I'm going to get to that. I promise you. Um, it's coming up in just a couple more hacks. Um, and then um, as far as uh, baking one a week. The other reason why I like to do that is because here's your second hat. Bake all the same flavors at the same time and start with your lightest flavor and work to your darkest or your heaviest flavor. And the example that I give is if I have vanilla, lemon, and chocolate cake on my schedule for the week, I'm going to start with vanilla. No need to clean out your bowl. So you're gonna save time by not cleaning out your bowl and just moving right into your lemon because lemon and vanilla cake, there is nothing in there that is gonna cross contaminate um, from the vanilla into the lemon that won't make your lemon taste great. Um, so don't stress over having to clean in between those two sessions. You know, scoop out all of your vanilla batter, get it into the pans, get it into the oven, and then use that same bowl to start mixing up your lemon cake as well. And and that one, again, it just saves time in washing dishes and it 
I hate washing dishes. So anytime that I can cross over, I absolutely do. As long as it's not going to cross contaminate um, with allergens. So that's the one thing that starts to come into play. If you know you have any allergens or if you are doing a batter that has nuts in it, uh, don't ever use that bowl again for another batter, unless of course it has nuts. Um, and then you can, you know, wash that bowl in between, make sure everything is fully clean before moving into something that might have an allergen in there. Um, and then, uh, let's see, um, one, uh, one thing that you could do if you do, uh, make allergen type cakes, uh, for instance, I do an almond cake and I have a lovely carrot cake that I do. Both of them include nuts. So if I'm making almond and carrot in the same week, I can always use the same bowl and transfer it from almond to carrot. So, you know, think about those associations that you can make. Um, I have the same thing with a, a lime cake that I do and a lemon cake that I do. I make one first and go right into the same bowl. So, you know, think about all the flavors that you are making in your week and try to consolidate them into groupings so that you can eliminate having to wash in between. Um, I know that it sounds like a silly thing to eliminate, but it really is a time saver. And, um, you know, financially it helps you too, because you're using a little less water and a little less energy. And, um, there's all sorts of wonderful effects of trying to use some of these kitchen hacks that I'm sharing with you today. Um, okay. So on baking, another thing is make sure you are baking off any excess batter that you might have left over. So for instance, if I make a batch of vanilla, um, one single batch, I know I can get uh, a six inch round and an eight inch round out of it, just a single layer. Um, but if I'm just doing two sixes, I can actually get three sixes out of it um, and not have any leftover batter. And so the tendency for me is to uh, go ahead and bake off any excess batter I have. It's usually into something small. It's either a six inch round, sometimes it's a four inch round. And I even have these little mini bunt cakes um, that I just love to make and then I use those as little gifts throughout the week or uh, for instance I do a lot of wedding cakes so I package up those little bunt cakes and I give them to the wedding planner or the venue or the catering team just as a small little thank you so never waste your batter um, make sure that you're using all of that batter up as well um, it's, uh, it is one of those things that product waste definitely uh, can cost you a lot of money in the long run. And if you don't think you're going to use the product, for instance, if, if there's no way you'll ever use another six inch single round of vanilla bean cake, you know, then putting it in the garbage is maybe the best option um, to avoid wasting more energy in baking it. However, um, I use them for, uh, I tuck them in the freezer, um, no stress over freezing things, but tuck them in the freezer and I just assemble them later on when I'm going to a potluck or a little picnic or something. And there's nothing wrong with mixing and matching your layers. You know, oftentimes I'll have a vanilla and a chocolate together. I'll sandwich it with some raspberry filling in the middle and nobody knows that it wasn't intentional. So, you know, use your resources. Again, just use your resources. I promise it will, it will help you in the end. Um, yeah, and so let's see, moving on to, this is number four already although I feel like I've added so many more in there, you guys. <laughs> um, whenever I'm making anything larger than a 10 inch round, now this is a six inch round, um, but if I am making 10 inches or bigger, I always use a flour nail in the middle. Now they actually have something called a baking nail. I'm bring this a little closer to you. It looks just like a flour nail, only it's flat on the top compared to a flour nail that's a little bit rounder on the bottom. Um, but you can use either, just drop that right in the center of your pan and that's gonna help the batter in the middle cook a little bit faster so that the times for the inside of the batter and the outside of your batter are a little bit more even. And really, again, this is more for larger cakes where the outside layers, the, the cake that is along the outer band of our pans, it gets hotter there because it's touching metal and it cooks up much faster. And so oftentimes people will experience domain if they don't have a flour nail in the middle um, 
because the flower nail is what actually will bring the temperature of the metal um, right through the center of the batter. And it really just helps distribute that heat a little bit more evenly. Um, this works really well for me. And then moving on to hack number five um, is another, this is another way to help with that baking situation. So um, how many people are familiar with the wraps that are sold? Um, I know Wilton sells it, for instance. Um, there's a wrap on the outside, and it's basically uh, a piece of fabric that you get wet, you soak it, and then you wrap it around your pan. And it just helps with insulation. So it helps keep the metal pan a little bit cooler to give the time for the batter in the middle to rise and bake evenly. And so these outer um, ribbons that you put on your pan, uh, the heating wraps, they actually distribute the heat evenly as well. So if you're not using a flower nail in the middle, you can absolutely use a wrap instead. I find that they can be a little costly. And so here's your big hack. Um, this is a lifesaver and just really inexpensive. And these can be used over and over again. But you're just gonna take some regular old paper towel, nothing fancy. I fold it in half twice so that it's about the height of my cake pan, okay? Then you're gonna get this wet, not sopping wet. Get it wet, wring it out a little bit if you just want it to be damp. And then you're gonna take a piece of foil the same length. So just make sure you're real close to that length. It can be a little longer, but definitely not shorter because you don't want your paper towel to be sticking out. So wet towel goes inside and you're gonna fold over your aluminum. And you're just gonna keep folding until it's completely covered. And then you wrap this wet paper towel foil wrap all the way around your cake. So you're just gonna tuck it in there, wrap it around. And then at the end, you can do a little crimp. So you just wanna fold it so that it sticks together. And this now becomes our wet insulator and allows the outside rim of your cake pan to stay a little bit cooler. It just lets all the batter come to temperature together, creates a beautiful, nice flat top. So if you don't believe that this works, I encourage you to do a little test. Um, do one pan with the paper towel wrap, in one pan without and watch what happens. And you will absolutely be amazed. Um, the one with our cool wrap comes out super flat. The one without the wrap will likely have a dome on it, which means that the batter on the outside of your pan is potentially gonna be too short. So when you level your cakes, you won't have you know a solid level all the way around. So um, these two baking hacks alone are my two favorite from a baking perspective. They really help my baking of cakes just be absolutely perfect. So um, don't hesitate to try either one of these or both at the same time is even better because you're gonna get the heat coming through the center um, just like it is on the outside and you're gonna just have a nice even bake. So um, yeah, the, Roberta, the damp towel, it changed my world. <laughs> literally changed my world. It made baking cakes so much easier because it really helps. I still trim my layers, but it really helps with getting rid of that dome in the center of your cake. It just makes for really beautiful, tall layers. You know, oftentimes what will happen is your layer, you know, it will stop maybe two thirds of the way up. And then that's the point in which you have to trim the top of your cake off. So you'll end up with really short layers. Um, but adding this will add a little bit of height to each layer and hopefully get you to the full two inches that's actually here. Um, more often than not, I feel like when we bake without these extra items, we get, you know, maybe three quarters of the way up the pan. Um, and then we're trimming off that dome. So um, these two hacks are absolute lifesavers and 
very inexpensive. You are correct, LB. Um, very inexpensive. And again, these can be reused. Don't throw these away. Um, just unwrap this when you're done. Throw out the paper towel if it's you know getting old. Um, you don't want to use anything that has any sort of you know mold or anything like that. Toss that. But if you open this up after baking and just um, unwrap your towel and leave it here, it will actually dry back out. Um, and then you just reuse it the next time. So you'll definitely get a few uses out of each of these before you have to make a new one. Um, I just literally keep them handy at all times. I have them in all sizes um, for all my pans and you can always make a new one. You you know, hopefully always have paper towels and foil on hand. Um, but that is just a super quick, inexpensive, easy trick um, that I absolutely love. One of my favorites. Um, Roberta, um, have always had the inside not baking prop, um, problem. Yep. And always thought it was a problem with the oven. Um, it's not a problem with your oven. It is, uh, it very well could be your pan. Um, I, so I'm going to do a plug. I love Fat Daddy's. Fat Daddy's is um, just an amazing pan. I have almost always used them. I started with Wilton like most of us do because that's what's available in our local stores. Um, and the, the Fat Daddy's pans are insulated better. They just are a more even bake in general. Um, so this for me, while I do use it, um, it's mostly on my larger cakes because uh, these pans do a great job of distributing the heat evenly. But if you're struggling with the inside not baking and your outside's burning or just crisping up way too quickly, um, then flour nail and uh, the foil trick are gonna save you, Roberta. Um, how about using dampened cake belt to help the layer bake more even? Um, yes, that's exactly what it is. That's the, that, that was what I was referencing, that fabric um, uh, cake belt. That is absolutely uh, what this is taking the place of, um, but cheaper, candier, um, just as easy to use. So fantastic. Great questions, you guys. I'm so excited that you're, um, you know, fill in. Have you used the foil trick before? Or is this something new for you guys? Because for me, it was life changing when I learned it. Um, okay, next hack. We're gonna shift into some ingredient hacks and then um, I have a couple more uh, when it comes to our equipment that we use, but uh, ingredient hack for you. I know that eggs are one of those things that really impacts our batter and it's the temperature of the eggs that will impact our batter. And so I, I'm showing you the more traditional hack, but I have a different hack for you. Um, so this may be a, a two for one for some of you, but if you are ever in a pinch and you haven't set up your eggs, your sour cream, um, your butter, those types of things, um, but there are always hacks for kind of hastening the process of bringing these to temperature in order to bake well. Having uh, room temperature eggs is important because of leaven leavening, the process of that cake rising. Um, and this is true for other baked goods like chocolate chip cookies, sugar cookies, those types of things. So um, this isn't just about cake, it is about all baked goods, but because I'm a caker, I just sort of naturally, everything goes cake for me. But um, the traditional hack is to use some cool water, put your eggs in there while you're prepping the rest of your ingredients to help bring them to temperature faster. And that absolutely works. It is um, not, I don't feel it's as quick as my other hack, but you can absolutely use it. Um, so that's the traditional hack. The hack that I use is actually warm up any of my liquid ingredients. So if my batter calls for water or oil or um, uh, butter, it depends. If it calls for melted butter, then you can add warm butter, not cool butter. Um, but if it, if, if it calls for the creaming method, then your butter needs to be cold. Uh, off on a tangent. So let's get back to eggs. Um, use a warm liquid in contrast to your cold egg. So it's not that you shouldn't do this, you absolutely can. Um, but one of my recipes calls for both water and oil, a vegetable oil, um, in order to create my batter. And so I use 
warm water. And so I put in my um, warm water, my oil, um, I'll put in my sour cream, for instance, even though that's chilled, um, that warm water and warm oil balances the, the coolness of the sour cream and of the eggs. The one thing you don't want to do is put hot water into your bowl and then add your cold eggs because you'll get scrambled eggs. <laughs> you don't want that. Um, so make sure that, you know, you, when you're you're mixing in your eggs to a warmer batter. Make sure it's not hot. You just want it warm. I mean, you can thoroughly mix your oil, your sour cream, your waters, um, milk, cream, any of those things can be warmed. And then add in your sugar, your flour, your leavening agents, and then add your eggs in last. Um, the, the warmness of the batter is going to just bring those eggs to temp, and then you have no issue with baking. So, um, I am notorious for not setting out my eggs when I need to. It's just not the first thing I think of when I'm baking. I actually think of my butter, which is the next hack. Um, so let me show you this hack real quick. I've got two butter hacks for you. Uh, well, I have way more butter hacks, but <laughs> um, I have so many butter hacks, I don't know what to do with it anymore. Um, Cindy, how much batter do I use in my pans? Um, I almost always go two thirds of the way up my pan. And um, here's another trick for you. Measure in weight if you can. So you have a couple options when you're filling your pans with batter. You can use your eye and just pour your batter in until it's about two thirds of the way up. You can use a scoop. I don't know if I have my scoop up here because I bake in my basement, but um, it, it's a big um, batter scoop, kind of like a cookie scoop, but like jumbo size. And it has uh, three quarters of a cup of batter in each scoop. And so I know how many of those scoops go into each size of my pans. Um, I have a little cheat sheet. I just list um, the size of the pan and how many scoops of my white scooper does it take? And it, it's equivalent to cups, basically. Um, so if you know how many cups each pan takes um, in batter, um, Wilton, for instance, has a fantastic uh, chart that will show you that. And I feel like I just put one of these charts out. So we'll have to, um, you have to dig around on Creative Cake Design just a little bit and get one of these charts. It tells you exactly how much batter for each pan. You can use the scoop method. And the other option you have is you can convert it to a scale, a weight, whether you're using pounds or grams or whatever, it doesn't matter. Um, but fill your pan, me well, measure your pan, tear it out um, so that it, it's zero, and then put your batter into your pan until it's filled to your liking. Bake it off, make sure it bakes okay. But remember that number, jot it down next to your recipe list and make sure that you're filling the size pan appropriately every single time just by using a scale. Um, so I uh, initially, when I had my um, full scale business where I had employees working for me, um, uh, we used a scoop method. And then a couple of years later, we transitioned and transferred all of those measurements or scoop measurements over to weight measurements. Um, it does vary a little depending upon your batters though. So for instance, um, a vanilla batter, like a, a just a traditional um, vanilla pound cake compared to a carrot cake, for instance, two very different weights to fill the same pan. So if you're measuring by volume, that's one thing. If you're measuring by weight, that's another thing. So just stay consistent whatever you choose to do um, in the end. Um, Let's see, uh, Fat daddy -O pans, Lee, you can get them um, on most uh, cake decorating sites. You can find them on Amazon. Fat daddy -O's is the supplier. They are, are not the retailer, um, but um, you, can, you can find them just about anywhere. They're, just look for Fat daddy -O cake pans. In fact, um, if you are a bargain shopper and you like to shop at TG Maxx or Marshalls or Home Goods, they actually have a handful of pans can find them every once in a while not all the time 
Um, size of the flower nail, it doesn't matter. Um, I use the same, so this is called a baking nail. Um, it's a little different, like I said, just because it's not curved, but I use this for all of my pans, as long as they're two inches tall, because that's the height of this particular baking nail. If you have a taller pan, um, for instance, I do a lot of ball pans for my novelty cakes, and they come in three, four, five inches tall, so you can get a variety of sizes of nails if you have deeper pans. Not so much the width, um, but more the height. And if you're doing something really large, like an 18 inch square, use a couple of nails. You know, you want to space them out a little bit so that you can distribute the heat throughout. Um, great questions, you guys. Oh my goodness, so excited. This is fantastic. I love it. I love being able to interact with you while we do these because they're, I mean, it's so much more fun for me to be able to answer your actual questions. Um, Marcia says she recently used the foil insulator to bake a deep two inch nine by 13 cake and it really made a difference baking evenly and keeping the cake level you guys i promise you if you take nothing else from this entire tutorial take this <laughs> this is the hack to remember it is a lifesaver in the baking world um okay so let's move on to our next hack um, for ingredient purposes um butter now butter is rock hard when it comes out of the refrigerator and rightfully so it's fat so it's solid at um when it's cold and it, that's really important for a lot of our baked goods we want um if we're using the creamy method we want ice cold butter things for pie crust or certain cookie dough recipes um even certain cake recipes where we're using um that creamy method the cold butter is important because that's what's going to create the fluff when we're creaming it with sugar, for instance. That granulated sugar fluffs up our butter by just like cutting into it and just making it um, airy and fluffy. So we want cold butter sometimes, which is absolutely wonderful. Sometimes we don't have um, cold butter. And so uh, let's say, and this is a good example because I do this a lot. In the morning when I'm ready to, to make all of my buttercream and all of that, I set out all my buttercream, or sorry, I set out all my butter and then I um, get my other ingredients together, double check, make sure, you know, everything's in its place. I get my mixer out, I get my bowls out, all my, all my utensils. Um, if my butter still isn't soft enough, um, if I have other things to do, I certainly will do that. But if it's not soft enough, I've got some tricks for that. Um, but the problem is, is sometimes um, I set all my butter out and I don't have any cold butter for when I need cold butter. So if you do that, toss this in the freezer, it only takes a minute, literally, to make this nice and cold again. So don't stress, if you need cold butter, put it in the freezer, you're good to go. But if you need hot butter, like melting butter, um, then I recommend, um, obviously, we're gonna put it into a glass container, put it in the microwave, which is not the hack, you guys. <laughs> just so you know, I'm not teaching you how to just, you know, um, uh, melt butter. Uh, cut your butter just in half real quick. Toss that in. Don't get splatter on your microwave oven. Use the wrapper. No beaver towel needed, no extra dishes, plates, nothing else. Put your butter wrapper on top, throw it in the microwave, let it pop all over if it needs to, and you will not lose your butter or have to clean up your microwave. Um, love this hack because I hate wasting more items. So I used to always dampen a paper towel, put it on top, um, it would keep my microwave clean, but then I felt wasteful because I'm just literally throwing away a wet paper towel. Um, so now I just use the wrapper. It's already going in the trash, so you may as well use it. Keep your microwave clean, save yourself some time, save yourself some headache and hassle, and it's perfect. So that, my dear peers, men, women, gentlemen, everything, whoever. Um, that is how you keep your microwave clean when melting butter, and I absolutely love it. Um, the next way to soften butter, not, um, not melted, obviously this is a melting hack, 
Saute in your butter. Now, everybody says just cut it up into pieces and um, it'll come to temperature quickly. And it does, you're exactly right. But it is way more fun just to let out your aggression and smash it with that wrapper and you have perfectly soft butter. <laughs> you guys, I use this every single time I need soft butter because it builds up my arms and it lets out a little aggression. And I don't know about you guys, I have a 15 year old son now and I have a lot of aggression and anger management issues. <laughs> um, so just smashing my butter every morning makes me feel better. It gets out all that stress and all that aggravation. Um, and I have nice soft butter to throw right into my mixer to start making my butter cream. So, um, I, this is, I, I love the, I love the foil hack, but the butter hack is way more satisfying. That is for sure. Um, okay. Mary says she loves the paper towel and aluminum hack. Um, you always seem to get the dome and, uh, it takes quite a bit off of the top. 100% agree with you. Um, you, you will, you will love me for this. You guys will be sending, um, thank you notes in the chat as soon as you try it. I promise. So, um, okay. So that's how I soften my butter. And then literally, you just toss it right into whatever you need. It is so, um, so perfect. This works for all sorts of things. As long as you don't need to present it on a platter, soften your butter like this. It feels great. <laughs> um, another way uh, to be able to soften your butter quickly. Um, and this is really, so, uh, I have another live coming up after this. That's for our gold members, um, at Creative Cake Design. So if you're not a gold member, I encourage you to sign up if you want to hear about more hacks when um, making your Swiss meringue buttercream or if you're not familiar with Swiss meringue buttercream it is the most delicious tastiest fluffiest lightest airy deliciousness of a buttercream I highly encourage you to try it um, but you have to be a gold member in order to watch that live so I encourage you to sign up it's super inexpensive you guys they're giving away all this information for for nothing so go sign up hopefully um we can get someone to put a link in there if you'd like to sign up for creative cake design if you're not already a member um but if you are a gold member coming up we've got swiss meringue buttercream uh, recipe and some of the do's and don'ts um with that and, and I'll be teaching you step by step through that. But one of the ways that I soften my butter when I'm ready for Swiss meringue, if this isn't doing the trick, which it does it every time, but I am, I like to give multiple solutions to every problem because not all, everybody wants to, you know, press their weight into their butter and let out their stress. Um, maybe some of you are baking happily all the time. <laughs> Um, it certainly makes me happy by the time I'm done, but I don't know. We start the baking process happy. So, um, let's see, uh, smashing and softening makes it easier to shape. Yes, it does. Um, for uh, making different uh, types of servings. Roberta, I think we need to get you on our team, dear. You are, you are full of lovely hacks too, I love it. Um, but one of the ways that you uh, cook Swiss meringue is over a water bath with uh, obviously a pan that has hot water in it. And so once you've um, made your uh, mixture, your sugar syrup, the syrup basically, um, you have a water bath pan left over. You dump out the hot water and you put your pan um, I'm going to use this one to em emulate the pan, but you put your pan right over top of your butter and the heat from the pan um, warms up the air around your butter and softens your butter very quickly. So um, that's one more hack. My goodness, I think I gave you 10 hacks just about butter. <laughs> Um, and yes, I love, um, I love our admin is saying, um, that, uh, well, Ray, Ray says, sorry, Ray says that I use the butter wrapper to, uh, coat the pan with butter. And that's a great hack as well for your wrapper. Um, that's going to be the inside of your cake pans. Put a little bit of flour in there if you need to shake it around and you've got a lovely um easy hack for uh for coating your pans as well so that's fantastic you guys are like full of your own hacks as well which i just i just love it makes me so happy that everybody is sharing um today all right so let me set my butter aside 
and I'm gonna pull in my mixer. Now, um, if you don't have a mixer, a stand mixer, um, then this particular hack won't do you a whole lot of good uh, as I'm demonstrating it. However, there's always ways to adjust this for your own um, mixer. So for a handheld mixer, for instance. But um, specifically for Swiss meringue, we are warming up a sugar syrup basically creating a marshmallow fluff, um, a meringue, um, and it's a hot mixture. And then we whisk it and whisk it and whisk it for like 10 minutes until it, it's cool. And really the only reason we're whisking it that long is to literally cool off our uh, mixture in order to add butter without melting the butter right away. So um, in order to hasten that process, I know 10 minutes doesn't seem like a long time, but if you're making, gosh, I probably make six batches of buttercream um, when I'm icing in one week, usually six batches of buttercream, it's kind of crazy. Um, so I need to decrease my time wherever I can to be efficient and effective. So I literally take a bag of ice, this one's been sitting out since the beginning of our chat, so uh, it's a little melted, but that's actually good. You want a little bit of water to be um, in with your ice because that's what's going to help mold and shape it to our uh, bowl. And so you literally just take a piece of saran wrap, you attach your, um, your ice bag, and I usually loop it around the handle, which you guys can't see back here, but I'm looping it around the handle and I'm just pulling it tight. And you can get it right up against the side of the bowl and you just have a little bit of saran wrap to wrap it. Now, if you have a bowl lift mixer, um, I, I actually have a bowl lift mixer um, in the commercial kitchen that I use downstairs. Um, I can actually just set my bag of ice right underneath the bowl um, the bowl is hooked up and, and raises up and it still um, creates a nice cool environment for our um, meringue to come to temperature quickly. Just by adding an ice bag, I can decrease the time I need in order to make Swiss meringue buttercream by five minutes. And five minutes times six is a lot of minutes when it comes to making six batches of buttercream a day. Um, and so, you know, for those of you who are maybe just making one batch, maybe this hack isn't so important to a one that will really save you a lot of time. Um, but for those of us who make a lot of product, um, this is definitely a time saver for us and um, it really helps me out a lot. Um, the, other, uh, the other thing that you can do just to hasten the process a little um, is if you have a warm mixture and you know obviously you can put this in a water bath and that's just simply cold water in a bowl you set the whole bowl in it um, but with meringue you actually need to whisk while cooling in order to get that fluff that we need for the buttercream. So that's not necessarily um, an option, um, but you can chill your bowl. So normally we heat the bowl and then we go straight to the mixer. You could pour your hot mixture into a cold bowl. Just put your bowl in the freezer. Um, if you have two bowls, um, put your bowl in the freezer and um, then just, uh, um, Swap your mixture from one bowl to the other and you'll have a nice cold bowl um, that will help get your meringue uh, moving quicker. And this goes for other types of things like custards as well, fruit preserves, um, anything that you're trying to uh, dissipate the heat from quickly. And you can always use a mixer with a paddle or a whisk depending upon what mixture you're using along with um, just a cold bowl and of course, Throw your whisk in the freezer too. Make that nice and cold as well. There's no reason you can't do that. Um, this is the hack. Uh, this along with the ice being in the freezer is what I use for my Swiss meringue all the time. Without question, my whisk is always in the freezer waiting for me. Um, my ice bag is always there as well. And I, it just helps make my meringue process a whole lot faster. So um, don't forget about that. Um, let's see. Uh, somebody else said the, um, Tracy, the butter wrappers work well to line the cake pans instead of parchment. If you collect enough, well, kudos to you. That's amazing. <laughs> I would have never thought of that hack. Um, 
I, I just spray mine with Baker's Joy because I don't have time for parchment paper. <laughs> I know it sounds horrible, but I don't have time to cut parchment paper. I don't even have time to like grab a piece of parchment paper and throw it in the pan half the time, um, even if they're the right size already. Um, so yeah, I just spray those babies down. I do use the parchment method um, for gluten-free baking. So uh, there's that. So yes, Tracy, that's amazing. That's really smart. I love it. Um, okay, so whisk trick um, is get it cold, but, um, and you're not gonna be able to see this as well as I would like. I used to have a glass bowl for this mixer, but I broke it in my last um, shoot that we did here in the kitchen uh, because it, it just, it got way too hot. So, um, anywho, here's another trick for you. When you have um, a, when you have a bowl um, mixer uh, like this, a stand mixer, um, the little trick that I have for getting that whisk at the bottom, and this is a fairly well-known trick. So if you if you guys already know this, um, you know no worries. But uh, there's a little notch that this whisk sits in, in in order for it not to be able to sink. If you put this on and you don't click that notch so you don't turn it and you just set your whole thing down, your whisk rests on the bottom. And I use this only when I'm doing light mixtures, things like whipping cream, um, because you don't want your whisk to break with a very thick um, mixture that might be in your bowl. If it's not secure at the top very well, it has the opportunity to just weaken a little bit. So I do want you to be mindful of that. Um, only use it for things like whipping cream or even just whipping up some egg whites, for instance. Those are very you know light and frothy, but you wouldn't want to do this with butter for instance, butter, unless it's super soft and room temperature, you know, um, something really, really soft and smooth, uh, don't use this trick, but it just helps get that whisk all the way down to the bottom so that you incorporate everything without having to stop your mixer and scrape the bowl and all of that good stuff. Um, and then my last hack for you guys is, um, when you are adding ingredients into something that's warm. So for instance, I use my meringue as uh, an example for you, but I chill um, some of my other ingredients that go into my Swiss meringue. For instance, my vanilla um, or any of my extract flavorings. When I've got a hot meringue in here and I'm whipping it and trying to bring it up to temperature, um, you can put in your cold flavorings um, and that will help change the temperature of your mooring as well. So I feel like um, I have given far many, um, like way more than 10 um, hacks. Um, but yes, you can absolutely uh, use any of these hacks that you would like. They're, they're so helpful. They're time saving. They're money saving. They are fun and stress relieving uh, <laughs> in some situations. Um, yeah, Roberta, I need your phone number and your email address here because you're just full of them. I love this. Yes, athletic ice packs instead of just um, ice that you have in your freezer. Um, those apps absolutely work around um, the ice hack as well and can uh, insulate and cool your bowl quickly. And of course they're reusable. Um, I don't necessarily have a lot of athletic packs around and it's, it would be a little bit of an investment, but definitely worth it um, for sure, especially if you make a lot of buttercream. Um, but for those of us who maybe don't do it quite as often, um, just the ice bag I think works perfectly for that but Roberta is on it. She has got another hack for us, which is fantastic. Um, love it. Uh, you, you guys are fantastic. I just love, I love being able to interact with all of you and learn all of these hacks. Um, Alice's question, which I think is another really great question, is do you measure all your ingredients before you start baking? And um, basically in the French uh, method, it, that is called mise en place, which just simply means to measure all your ingredients into individual bowls to be able to just add them exactly when you're ready. And so it breaks up the process from, you know, measuring and adding, measuring and adding to just measuring everything and then adding everything when you need it. And that's a lovely method. And I 
Yes, tend to use it for recipes that I am not familiar with. Um, if it is a recipe that I've never made before, I absolutely use the mise en place method of measuring everything out. I use individual bowls for everything, and that is wonderful. The reason I don't use it for my recipes that I do constantly that are literally in my head because I've made them so much, um, I don't do mise en place for, for the, oh, one reason. And it's this reason. This is a scale. I absolutely love using my scale for my recipes. So for instance, I put my bowl on the scale. This is how I start every recipe. I put my bowl on the scale, I push the tear button, which just simply clears out the measurement. Well, I have to turn it on first, but then I hit the tear button. My measurement is now zero, and I add one ingredient at a time. I know that my cake recipe starts with eight ounces of sour cream. So eight ounces of sour cream goes in the bowl, and I literally just scoop it from the container. And then I tear it out and I pour, you know, I'm going to say four ounces of water and four ounces of oil, whatever it might be. And I pour each of those individually in. I only use my scale when I bake. Um, I have these, you know, I have measuring cups. I have all of my spoons and everything that I need. And when I am using a recipe that only has our standard measurements, um, I absolutely use this and I do the mise en place. However, um, for recipes that I'm super familiar with and I have personally gone in and, and made all of my adjustments for weight, um, almost all of my recipes have both standard and metric um, quantities to them because I just, I love my scale. It saves, here's the reason why. I don't want to wash 10 more bowls if I don't have to. <laughs> I hate washing dishes. Um, me, and, all right, not as much as I hate doing laundry, but I do absolutely hate um, washing dishes and I hate laundry. That is my ultimate pet peeve, but, um, but I don't like to wash dishes. And if I can save a little bit of water and a little bit of detergent or soap, and I can save a little bit of time, I am doing it because I don't want to do more than I have to do. Um, so like I said, first time with a recipe, I absolutely scale things, weigh things, measure things, however I need to do it, mise en place it, then make it. But once I get used to that recipe, or I convert my cups to, to ounces or grams or whatever I'm gonna do, um, I do that as well. So um, for any of you who um, have uh, the gold membership, um, my, uh, my quarterly download for you guys was an amazing little cheat sheet on how to convert cups to ounces to grams to whatever you need. It had common ingredients and what those transitions are. Um, so if you're not a gold member already, I would highly encourage you to become one. Um, those downloads are available every quarter um, to be able to get extra information from me and uh, from all the resources that we pull from. You get special everything. So um, I know that there's a link in the comment section for you to sign up and I would encourage you to do that. Again, if you joined us late, please, please download um, the guide that is coming with this live tutorial. This is very similar to what you would get from me every quarter on something new and different. Um, and it's also what you, um, you know, these are part of, of what we do for our gold members with an exclusive live um, every month as well. Uh, obviously, starting this month, we've got um, everything that we've got free lives, we've got gold member only exclusive lives, and we've got downloadables, we've got it, it's all coming, you guys, it's all here, and um, it is worth every little penny. Uh, I, I'm not going to say how much it is because there are so many um, discounts out there right now that uh, I don't know which one they're promoting. <laughs> so, but like less than $5 a year. So 
go get your gold membership um, so you can join me for our next live, uh, which is absolutely fantastic. So I just want to say I hope that this live tutorial was really informative for you. If nothing else, I think everybody's going to be using our aluminum foil paper towel uh, hack in order to bake off really level cakes and just um, make that process so much easier and better for you guys. So thank you for, uh, for joining me today and thank you for being a part of creative cake design we're so glad you're here we have lots of exciting things coming up in the future so i highly encourage you if you are not a member yet come on over become a member because we've got lots of amazing things coming um, that are exclusive to members only and so i would encourage you to do that um, Feel free to uh, pop any other questions in the live chat box and I will do my best to answer those um, in the coming days as well. And um, again, thank you so much for joining me and for those of you who are gold, we'll see you in, oh, what time is it? Oh, like 20 minutes or so, okay? So we'll see you at 11.30 Mountain Time, uh, 12.30 Central. So um, thanks so much for joining us and we'll see you all next month for decorating hacks. So next month, it'll be very similar to this, but we're going to talk decorations and how to make your decorations faster and um, just do things ahead of time. There are all sorts of really fun uh, cake decorating hacks coming up next month for our August Live. So I hope you'll join us next month as well. Bye, everyone. Have a great day.